Hi, my name is Ben Martins. I'm one of the automotive application specialists here at Pico Technology in the UK. And today we are going to be looking at the keyless entry detector, the TA330. So what is it? Well, it's, uh, it operates at 125 to 140 kilohertz, and that's about the operating range for most manufacturers for keyless entry and smart key entry vehicles. Important factor to remember is that it won't decode the um, security information that's actually sent out, so it's uh, not going to cause any problems there. Now, it's a three metre lead, which allows plenty of manoeuvrability around the vehicle in order to get to the certain areas that you need to actually inspect. A couple of things to point out to start with before we actually get going is um, the detection zones. Now most keyless entry vehicles have a detection zone around the vehicle in about two meters sort of area. Usually around the door handles and around the boot area, so bear that in mind. What we're going to do is we're going to start by looking with the vehicle locked up to start with, just to see if the vehicle is going to output anything and transmit uh, a, a frequency that we can actually detect using the, the keyless entry detector. So with the scope set up, we're going to operate on about 200 milliseconds per division time scale, um, plus or minus 10 volts. We don't actually know at the moment what that's going to output, and obviously from manufacturer to manufacturer they might vary. So pick something quite broad to start with, just to see if we can capture something. So we'll get the scope up and running. Now this isn't a smart key vehicle, if you like. This still actually has a button that you actually have to press. It's still keyless in the terms of the fact that you don't actually have to physically put the key in. You can keep it in your pocket still. Now I've got the key set further away, as I said before, in order that the vehicle doesn't unlock. So we're just gonna offer up the keyless entry detector to the door handle and press the button. And as you can see, we have got some activity there. Quite a small scale still at the moment, so what we're going to do is we're going to just going to stop the scope there and we're just going to go in a bit closer. So we're going to drop the voltage to about 2 volts for the minute and we'll get the scope up and running again. And we'll have another look, see what we've got. Again, what you may find is that actually exactly there, that there's different points on the door handle that will actually transmit a higher frequency. So one of the things with the actual keyless entry detector sensor is that you can actually pick up where the high points are and where the low points are on the handle, which can be very useful if you're actually looking to diagnose certain faults that you may have with the, with the actual transmitter itself. Okay, with the keyless entry detector, not only will it just detect the, uh, obviously the keyless entry side of things, but we can also look at the smart start or keyless start as well. What it would do is obviously there's a, we're talking about transmitters outside of the vehicle in the, in the detection zones, but also inside the car there is um, the same thing. So what we can do is if we've got, a, got an issue, if you like, with the vehicle not actually changing state, if you're pressing the ignition on and off button, we can actually determine whether or not the, key, the car's actually looking for the key in the first place. So by taking the um, keyless entry detector, we can actually, as I said, sniff out to see if there's any sort of activity going on inside the car. So just by purely having the, the keyless entry detector in sort of the middle of the car area, we can already start to see that there is some activity. Moving closer around in different areas, again, we can start to see even more activity and then basically isolate exactly where that, that key transmitter is. And therefore, if we did have a problem with it, or if we didn't, we can obviously consult the repair manual and see exactly where the locations should be if we're not actually picking anything up. 